Welcome to another edition of Maverick University. I'm your host, David Hallberg. Joining me today is Pastor Terry Angel, pastor of Faith Baptist Church in Bourbon, Illinois, and adjunct professor at Providence Baptist College for the last 25 years. Thank you so much for joining us again. Good to be back. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit about uh, an opportunity that you've had through the years to preach in uh, youth settings, whether it's a youth conference or camp, and it's something that not everybody has a privilege to do, but... When they do have the privilege to do that, they may be caught off guard and, oh my goodness, how is this how is this preaching different than preaching any other sermon? Uh, how do I gauge a young person's reaction? Are there certain topics that always should be preached on? Mm. Um, and so I want to talk with you a little bit about that. And if you could start with you know talking about your background, preaching to young people, and how what was the first setting in which I you started doing I, that? I guess I became a youth pastor, you yes, know, sir. along with other responsibilities when I went to work for Pastor Brown and Marion Avenue at Washington, Iowa, mm-hmm. and, uh, of course, began to have weekly pre-Sunday night service youth meetings. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we call them TNT at our church. I don't know. Other, their other churches have different names. So began preaching to teenagers on a weekly basis mm-hmm. at that time, and then through the ministry of Cedar River Baptist Camp, I uh, began preaching to, you know, primary camp and then junior camp and graduated, I guess, if you will, uh, to teen camp. And yeah. I don't, I think I preached, I think I preached 24 summers in a row at Cedar River wow. teen camp. And um, and then, you know, Brother Vineyard invited me down to preach at the youth conference at Windsor Hills. And mm-hmm. from there, that opens doors. And so it just, uh, yeah, I have preached uh, teenage meetings, especially camps and conferences in the summer. Well, since the late '80s, you know, since the early wow. '90s, so okay. it's been a long time. So you got a resume. <laughs> I was, last Thursday, Friday, I was in Mississippi okay. uh, at youth conference at Bethel Baptist Church with Pastor Sexton down okay. there. So preached with Mike Johnson. So it, can I say this? It's been a privilege. Yes, it sir. really has. And you know, I don't do as much as many of those as I used to because it it does I, to me. It requires special a uh, special amount of energy and everything. But uh, yeah, absolutely. And as as a sixty six year old, you kind of you start to feel like you know I'm just kind of I'm not as close to teenage issues as you know, as used to be. And I grew up at right at the tail end or the very beginning of the computer. I you know I was I wasn't a computer age mm. teen uh, you know young person a young adult you know so. But you know what? The Word of God is timeless. Yeah, it absolutely. It's without boundary. So uh, just some things to think about. You know, Paul, told, Paul said to Timothy that from a child he had known the Holy Scriptures. Mm. They were able to make him wise into salvation. So can children, can teenagers learn the Word of God and benefit from it? Absolutely. Daniel had to learn something before he went to Babylon. Absolutely. Because he purposed in his heart not to defile himself with the king's meat and drink. So that was learned before he got to Babylon. And he was probably a late teenager, early young adult when he got to Babylon. So uh, it is it is of extreme importance that we take seriously the opportunity to preach to teenagers. Mm-hmm. And uh, in, in a, in I do believe I do believe there's a you know there's a di- there's a difference and there's a targeted when you've got a targeted audience. You know, if you're preaching to your bus workers, that's a targeted audience. Mm-hmm. When you're preaching to um, teenagers, that's a targeted audience. Uh, if I could just say, so maybe it's just some, some suggestions for men in ministry who are preaching, if it's a weekly on a weekly basis to your youth group, mm-hmm. or you get invited to preach a teen camp or a teen conference, okay? Well, consider what's at stake, okay? Consider this is the next generation. Sure. You know how important the next generation is to God's work. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, God calls men from teen, that teenage group, the, the teenage age bracket, the mm-hmm. children age bracket, to be the next preacher someday, to be the next pastor, to be the next evangelist. So remember what's at stake here. You're, 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 you're reaching, hopefully, the next generation, okay? Uh, creatively, creatively present the truth, okay? Uh, how can I preach a truth that will, that will really hit them where they are. And I, I suppose if I'm known for anything when it comes to teenage preaching, there's a couple of messages that just stick out in people.
people's minds mm-hmm. is the message of uh, seeing the invisible you mm-hmm. and the message snake bite. And those are really, snake bite is the approach from the negative sense. Don't get out of the hedge. You know, stay in the hedge. This is going to mm-hmm. happen if you get out of the protective hedge of your authorities. Mm-hmm. Seeing the invisible you is, this is why you stay in it, you know. Yeah, that's an inspirational the, one. Yeah, the yeah. day comes when you're going to walk down that aisle. Mm-hmm. It's, you know, I still get, yeah. When you're going to walk down that aisle pure and clean and mm-hmm. Enjoy the greatest day of your life outside of salvation when you become a husband or a wife. I mean, so, you know, just God uh, gave the, the, I don't know, what do you call it, the inspiration, not the inspiration like scripture, but the motivate or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. to creatively present. And I, I, in Mississippi last week, Thursday, yeah. Friday, here's a, here's a pastor and his wife, and I forget what state they were from, but they came up after the final service, and Brother Angel we were teenagers at Jacksonville, Arkansas, at a youth conference, and you preached uh, on the hedge, the snake bite message. You know, really? we both we both as teenagers went forward and determined to stay in the hedge, and now we're married and mm-hmm. we're in ministry. And she got emotional. You know, that night God had called their their young lady, their their teenage daughter, into full time ministry. Wow. Not, not, not to preach, but to marry into full time ministry. Yeah. So I, I run I run into people, adults everywhere, who heard. Seeing the invisible you or snake bite. There's a way to creatively, creatively, is that a word? Creatively. Creatively, yeah. Yeah, I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> creatively preach yeah. truth or present truth that really, I'm not talking about being theatrical necessarily, mm-hmm. but I mean, get right down where they live, they can grab it. Okay. Yeah, it's not necessarily antics, but you want to oh. present it in such a way where it's memorable and it captures attention. And it, it's a truth that hits them where they're living. Mm hmm. Where they where they are, okay, and then you got to connect with the listeners. You know, you study them, eye contact, look at them, look in their faces, okay, mm-hmm. um, and and then contain personal and practical illustrations in, in every message. So you want to bring in illustrations, some of them from maybe your own teenage years. Mm-hmm. Be careful that you don't glamorize sin and wrong. And I, a preacher makes a bad mistake if he makes the consequences of sin less appealing than the pleasure of sin. Mm. or less heavy. Yeah, You have to always make the consequences heavier yeah. than the pleasures. I don't know if I said that yes, right, sir. but you understand. Yeah. Okay. And then you want to compel a personal response. I think there are two questions to ask yourself when you're developing a message to teenagers. What do I want them to learn? Mm-hmm. And then what I want them to do about it. I, I, you talk about topics that every teenager needs. They need, they need to be preached to about Bible reading. Get this nailed down. Yeah, as a teenager, mm-hmm. get it. Don't wait till you're a young adult. Get this nailed down as a teenager. Okay, so I've got very different messages that I use. Oh, happy day, a bit of honey. Different messages that I use that emphasize reading the Bible. Reading the Bible. Why does the average teenager? Okay, so now read the Bible. That's what I want them to do. Sure. Okay. Yeah. So what do I want them to do about it? How do I want them to? Okay, that's what I'm to learn the importance mm-hmm. of reading the Bible. Now, what do I want them to do about it? The average teenager does not read their Bible. They don't go. You know what? No, I'm not interested. I don't care about reading the Bible. No, that's not anybody's attitude. Hardly. No, if they're yeah. saved, yeah. you know, if they're even backslid, they don't yeah. have that bad of an mm-hmm. attitude. The reason young people don't read it, they don't make the, they don't have a time. They don't have a place. Mm-hmm. It's not in their schedule. It's well, I'll get around to it. Well, you know what that means. The devil's going to make yep. sure they don't. Mm-hmm. So at the invitation. The invitation is, if you're at the altar, when is your time? Where is your place? Get it settled. Think through your day. You may mm-hmm. not be able to decide that till you get home. Think about your day, teenage young man, teenage young lady. But where? what is your time? Where is your place? You sit down and you give attention to God. So you're not Lord. preaching necessarily only about what they should do, but how, how to get it to done. accomplish that. How to get yeah, it done. Yeah, that's important. Okay. Concentrate on the personal touch outside of service times. This is especially important for preaching at teen camps. Mm-hmm. As uh, uh, Teen camps, uh, sometimes teen conferences is a little more difficult to make that personal touch outside of the services because there's – you know, when you're at camp, you can go. You can leave the comfort of your cabin mm-hmm. or your wherever you're staying as a guest preacher. Get out there on the ball field. Yeah, walk around with those boys. All the activities are contained to that property, so you can just watch them box. Over. You know, have fun. Watch them do American Eagle. I mean, I wrote this down years ago. Your relation with your relationship with them outside of preaching times mm-hmm. determines their response to you during preaching times. 
So you, you, you get out there in the mm-hmm. field, and you're joking with them and say, man, way to go, or come on, sissy, can't you do this? You know, you're having yeah. fun uh, interacting with them out there in the 90-degree heat mm-hmm. instead of sitting in the air conditioning. I mean, I remember, you know, the camp director telling me, you know, he had a speaker in one time, put him in, a, in like an RV, mm-hmm. was it a plate, and he'd go to the service, preach, go right back to the RV, ate his meals in the RV, come out, preach the service, go back to the RV, never ate meals, mm-hmm. never got out in the field, and it was an ineffective week. Yeah. You, you can't do that with teenagers. You can't. You've got to get out there and, and make some personal contact with them as much as possible. And that's not hard to do at a camp setting, like you say. Yeah. It's right there. You know, youth conferences, sometimes you're, you know, you're going to this place and going to this place. Sure. It's a little more difficult. But, you know, and you can go walk around in the dining hall mm-hmm. and laugh about the food, you know, and have a good time. Just, Cut up with them a little bit. Let them see that you're human. Mm-hmm. You know, you're normal. And so uh, that's good for preaching to teenagers. Um, you know, commend yourself and your listeners to God. The devil will try to convince you as a preacher that, you know, this you're not getting anywhere with this. You're not making a difference. The teenagers aren't paying attention. That's a lie. Mm. That He's the father of all lies, right? Yeah. So what, as a preacher to preaching to teenagers, I look at the message and I say, Lord, I feel completely inadequate to preach this to teenagers, but I'm, I'm at this age in life. But it's your word, mm-hmm. and they're your kids. So I am commending myself, this message, these kids to you. It's yours. Yeah. Work with it. And Brother Hallberg, it's, it, it, it still works. God's word mm-hmm. still works. It's not the pre. It's not me. It's not the man doing the preaching. You understand what I'm yep. saying? So uh, continue to grow personally. Uh, you know, a. a even even in teenage preaching, your best preaching is going to come from what God has maybe recently taught you, mm-hmm. shown you in the scriptures. So if you're not if you're not getting anything out of the Bible yourself, you're gonna run dry. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. And I can't just go to a teen camp and, and and let me say this. You know, Brother Brown said early early on when I became pastor and started traveling a little bit, mm-hmm. he said, Terry, don't be afraid to use the messages that work. If it works in your church, it'll probably work in the next church. And if it works in that church, it'll probably work in the next church. Well, you can think of Brother Brown's message. Absolutely. What comes to your mind? Uh, blow the whistle on the wolves. Blow the whistle on the wolves. Yeah. And then had a friend. That's true. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. That works everywhere. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there are going to be messages. You mentioned about are there certain topics? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Relationship with parents. Mm-hmm. Because that's so fundamental. Yep. That's, that's where so, they are. That's it's just it's yeah. just... It's not time for you to, and that, it's never time, but it's a critical right now that you maintain an open relationship with your dad and mom. Mm-hmm. Uh, music. Mm-hmm. It's, it's just friends. It, and, and I'll even say that. Yeah, Brother Angel, every time I go to camp or conference, this is all I hear. You know, friends. You got to be careful. Why is that? Yeah. Because you need it. Mm-hmm. You're at a critical point in life. Your choice of friends doesn't mean that doesn't apply to you as an adult. Sure, it does, mm-hmm. but it's more critical. Simple. Then. The simple man in Proverbs mm-hmm. is the teenage person. Simple does not mean educably slow. It doesn't mean mentally handicapped. It means roomy. It means they've not narrowed it down. They they got a lot of room for influence. Why is it easier to win a six year old to Christ than to win a sixty year old to Christ? Yeah. The 60-year-old has it narrowed down. Mm -hmm. His opinions, his logic, his reasoning is narrowed down. That six-year-old has room. Mm -hmm. You can influence him. The Scripture can influence him. So that teenage, that simple person, that simple young man in the book of Proverbs is a teenage young person. Mm -hmm. you you still got a lot of room for influence, friend. It's not because you're stupid. It's because of your age in life. Get Get it out of your mind. We're not preaching down to you. We're preaching to help you. you got this much room. For influence as compared to this much. Yeah. So these are areas that are critical for you. Critical. Maintain your relationship with your parents. Your, you got to choose the right friends. Watch your music. You were going to say something. Can you talk a little bit about the progression of preaching throughout the week? In yes, a conference absolutely. Or a camp? Yeah. I've heard, overheard you and other pre- preachers talking about, you know, Maybe the topics change throughout the week, or maybe yeah. a purpose, or you're trying to build up to something. You know, I, th- bigger. I, I think God helped me with this early in camp, early when I started preaching camps. You know, what, what happens first night at camp? I mean, they've traveled either overnight mm-hmm. or seven hours, left at three o'clock in the morning. They've done activities. Yeah. They come to the service. They're tired. Yeah. 
I'm not going to hit on a specific topic. I'm going to say, look, you're here. Give yourself to God this week. Mm-hmm. That's the first thing I want them to do. Mm-hmm. I have a message I've preached many, many. Don't it's almost miss, an orientation. Don't miss your yeah. burning bush. Yeah. What burning bush is here this week for you? Don't mm-hmm. miss it. So that opening message is give yourself to the week of camp. Give yourself to the conference. What is it you're here for? Mm-hmm. You're here for a specific reason. What? What is it? God brought you here. Give Got yourself it. to that, okay? And then you can start in. You know, salvation's always good, mm-hmm. you know. And then, you know, separated living. Again, relationship with parents. And Brother Hallberg, the tireder they get during the week, their spiritual resistance falls off. Mm. The tireder they get physically, yeah, their, their spiritual resistance decreases. They're more open to Scripture, more open to messages, so just stuff you learn. Yeah. Well, you've done it for a long time, and so there's a lot of experience there. And you're right with the illustrations. I remember as a kid uh, at Faith Baptist in Bourbon A that I made comments to my parents. I'm like, I just he, I get something out of whenever you preach because the illustrations, you know, I can, I can still tell you the illustrations that you used <laughs> over and over again, but they spoke and they meant something and they really helped me understand exactly what you were saying. Even as a small kid, well, I got it. Lord. I got well, it. Praise so, the Lord. Well, thank you so Maybe much. Maybe if Brother Hallberg gets it, Anybody others can, can get it. Right? That's right. Anybody can get it. That's right. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining right. us on our podcast. And make sure you check out our other episodes on our YouTube channel. And that make sure that you like and that you subscribe to the channel as well. Tell others people about it as well so they can be helped and check out the audio only as well. God bless you.